ICP, the internet computer, is one of the worst cryptocurrencies I've ever seen. It's constantly underperforming Bitcoin and Ethereum and for good reason. It's hard to believe, but ICP is still in the top 100, place 34 in terms of market cap. And that's after the price made a 99% drop. What was once more than $300 per token is now at around $3. Now, where does this underperformance come from when there's continued technical development? It's not that hard to find out. It's simply an ever increasing supply of ICP. The supply of ICP is growing faster than its demand. More supply, less demand means a depressing price. Just two years ago, we had 174 million tokens. Now we are at 440. 47 million roughly. So the supply roughly 2.5x, which equals an annual growth rate of 60%. For the price of ICP, just to stay at its current level, the demand has to grow by 60% percent per annum and the demand is probably rather flatlining right this is the number of reddit subscribers on icp this is the number of telegram users of their channel and even though we do see sometimes rallies of more than 100 percent right this is 116 percent this is not idiosyncratic to icp only once we look at icp divided by bitcoin or divided by ethereum this rally here is much less impressive here, yeah, this is the same rally for ICP relative to Ethereum, only a 50% increase. Now there's an opportunity in all of this, and that's to bet on falling prices of ICP. When you've got a token that goes down that constantly, then you can bet on the price to go down relatively safely. I mean, nothing is safe in crypto land, but if you had to make a directional bet, what would you really do for internet computer? Would you buy the token or would you rather bet on falling prices? I'll share two things here. First of all, where can you potentially bet on a falling ICP price? And second, how can you manage the risk? Because whenever we bet on falling prices, there is pretty much no limit to how much we can lose, right? Because when you take on a loan, for example, denominated in ICP, and then the price goes up, the price might go up that high that your collateral isn't anymore backing up that loan, and then you get forced liquidated. You don't want to be in a situation like this. You want to manage your risk. But first, let's talk about where to short ICP, where to bet on falling prices. When you go to CoinGecko and you search for ICP, you can scroll down and click on markets. And then in markets, there's a subcategory called perpetuals. So those are perpetual futures. And over here, we've got the different centralized exchanges. And we've also got the funding rates for borrowing in ICP, which are fluctuating around zero, right? So you can short internet computer on Bybit or on OKX or on Qcoin. There's also BitGet, or you could even go decentralized, right? On DYDX. Here you do have the Ethereum gas fees though. So you need to be part of any of those centralized exchanges first or use collateral in Web3 on DYDX to make that trade. Now let's talk risk mitigation. How can we avoid to get caught up in those temporary 100% rallies when long-term ICP does really poorly? I crunched the numbers to quantify how can we get in and out of ICP when things aren't that bearish. So a straightforward way is to use moving averages, right? To rather be outside of the short whenever the price goes above a moving average and then bet on falling prices whenever we are below. The question though is what's the best duration here? Should we take say the 100 day, that's that moving average. Should we take the 50 day? What historically would have worked the best to time those trends? And here's the back test. So we've got data starting in May of 2021 all the way to today. Here is the trading performance according to those moving averages. So we go long, we bet on rising prices whenever the price is above the moving average. So we bet on rising prices here. We can simply just skip that, right? We don't have to bet on rising prices for ICP. I think it's a bad idea. But in the back test, we've got this in and we go short whenever the price is below. Right, so whenever this happens. When you set it up this way, you can find out the best moving average duration. So we've got the simple moving average and the exponential moving average here. 
annualized buying and holding ICP would have given us every year compounded minus 74%. And look at those nice moving averages here, right? They really outperformed us buying and holding a lot. This is the same thing, just shown differently. On the X axis, the moving average duration. On the Y axis, the annualized performance. So the 133 day simple moving average, for example, is very good. Another one more short term is the 38 day. So let's look at those in the chart. 138 and 33 is the one that's closer to the price. And 138 is the one that's further away that doesn't wiggle as much. So in the current situation, it does look like to a degree we aren't that bearish. Ideally, we want to be dropping below $3.03. That being said, the longer term moving average tends to work slightly better. So this is what we should actually be using. So there's two ways to approach this, right? We either go short right now and we have a stop loss whenever we cross the 138 day. So that's at $3.69 roughly. Alternatively, we simply just wait for the $3.04, $3.03 to be crossed again below. Note this is not a perfect approach, right? Sometimes we've got our failed signals, but overall that's why we do the back test. We want to find out what's the best way to determine those trends. There needs to be a way to mitigate risk, right? When the position goes temporarily against you, at what point in time do we exit? And the 133 day seems to be that perfect mark. So there's a real learning here. We don't necessarily have to find the best cryptocurrency to make money in crypto. We simply just have to be directionally right. So if we know a very poorly performing cryptocurrency for whatever reason, where the overall long-term trend is bearish, we can still make money from this. We can bet on falling prices. And I'd argue that it's easier to make money with falling prices than with rising prices in this current market because we are not in an altcoin season, right? Altcoin season happens whenever Bitcoin has already risen, when everybody wants to look for the next big Bitcoin, when everybody missed the Bitcoin boat and wants to get into something more risky. When we are not at the end stage of a bull market, then altcoins tend to underperform, especially when they inflate as much as ICP, where supply is growing that quickly. So this is how I personally make my money. I short altcoins. And if you want to know more, feel free to check out the premium membership or alternatively our Telegram. Links are down below.